Uh, my name is Ken Jessen, and I'm at the Virginia Dale Stage Station that was built in 1862, and I want to emphasize that this is on private property, although it is open a couple of times a year for the public. Uh, ben Holliday started the Central Overland in 1861, and it was based on another company going out of business, and Ben Holliday took over. The original route was across central Wyoming, and it dipped down into uh, Colorado at uh, Julesburg, at the extreme northeast corner of the state. And uh, what happened is uh, the indigenous people uh, took exception to having their land taken away, to having their bison killed and bringing them on the verge of starvation. So uh, in 1862, Holiday changed the route. The route did dip down to Julesburg, but then he changed the route to follow the South Platte River. And at a place called Latham, which no longer is, exists today, there was one branch that went across north of the Cache Laputa River to Laporte and up through Virginia Dale. The other route followed the South Platte River and went down to Denver and then came up the Cherokee Trail and joined the original trail. And uh, prior to this move, however, Jack Slade was the manager and originally of 500 miles across Wyoming. And uh, then of course he became manager down here in Colorado. But trouble was brewing in 1861 with a man named Jules Benai. And Benai is the founder of the town of Julesburg. Benai was stealing horses and then returning them to the Overland for a reward. And he was also stealing a fodder for the horses. So Slade was sent out to fix the problem. But Benai, he he could see everything. He had men all over the place and he knew Slade was coming and he knew Slade would probably fire him. So Benai pulled out a revolver and he shot Slade six times. And then he got a shotgun and Slade survived the shotgun blast. And believe it or not, Slade lived through all of this. Slade was taken back to his, uh, his headquarters in Horse Creek. The um, the surgeon at uh, Fort Laramie pulled out half a handful of lead out of Slade's body and he ended up living with the rest of lead uh, in his body the rest of his life. Well, after he recovered, and that probably took maybe a year or so, Slade sent his men out to capture Benai and get even with him. And the men were told to be sure you bring Benai back alive. But Benai died in the trip back. It's quite a long distance from Julesburg back to Horse Creek. But his men wanted to collect some kind of reward that Slade was willing to give them. So he tied Benai up against a corral post and said uh, to Slade, Benai is still alive. Well, in order to test that, Slade went over to Benai's body and cut one of his ears off. And, Sl and Benai didn't flinch, so Slade knew that Benai had been killed. So he took and cut the other ear off. And later he um, dried the ears and he collected these ears the rest of his life. And, but the new route in 1862 required quite a bit of work on the part of Slade, and he had to pick a home station. That is a place where people could get out of the stagecoach and have a meal and even stay overnight. And he picked this beautiful valley. Through this valley is Dale Creek. Slade's wife's name was Virginia. So he, he combined the name Virginia to Dale, and this became Virginia Dale. But Slade was an alcoholic, and he destroyed uh, saloons. He fired down into a moving stagecoach. He threatened uh, an agent at the Little Thompson Station, and uh, he was eventually uh, thrown in jail in Denver and fired by the Overland. And then he moved to Virginia, Day, Virginia City, Montana, but he continued his rampages uh, when drunk. And uh, the... Uh, the vigilantes there in Virginia City uh, got tired of all of this, so they strung him up with a rope. 
And uh, the irony about this is that Virginia arrived too late to save her husband. But what she did was she had a metal coffin with soldered seams on it created for Slade's body. And he, she put, had Slade's body put into this coffin and filled it with alcohol, which I find quite ironic. And then it was sealed and she took the coffin uh, the wrong direction. She took it west to the city park in Salt Lake City where Slade was buried. The original intent was to take Slade back to Carlisle, Illinois, where he grew up. But eventually, stagecoach, uh, the stage, long-distance stagecoach travel came to an end. And this had to do with one of the greatest accomplishments in the United States, and that's the Transcontinental Railroad. It arrived in Julesburg in 1867, and then, of course, most of you know, at Promontory Point, uh, the rails were joined to the uh, Colorado joined to the uh, uh, Central Pacific, and uh, the Transcontinental Railroad was finished in 1869. And this ended long distance stagecoach travel. And then in 1870, Governor Evans built a line from Denver south uh, uh, up to Cheyenne. So Cheyenne and Denver were connected to uh, the Transcontinental Railroad. And so that pretty well did end long distance uh, stagecoach travel. Holiday sold Sold the his line, I and I can't understand why uh, Wells Fargo bought it because it was obvious that stagecoach travel was coming to an end, and then the line, the stage station was basically abandoned. The Lawsons converted it into a store, and uh, in 1925, a huge dance hall was put out in front of it. It's gone now. And uh, it's a long, complicated story, but what really killed the use of this was the relocation of US 287. And it's located about two miles to the south of here. So no longer did traffic pass by the stage station. The owners of the stage station ended up being the Maxwells, and in 1948, 1950, they donated the land to the Virginia Dale Home Demonstration Club, which is now the Virginia Dale Community Club. And so stabilization grant in 1996, and it went on and on. It was the longest uh, restoration uh, project ever in the history of Larimer County. And the work was finally finished in the, uh, around 2020. And it's open to the public twice a year or by appointment. And I do want to point out something. If you want to know more about Jack Slade, this is the book to have. And also it includes a lot of history of, uh, of the Overland in it and also of the stage station. And this is by Dan Rottenberg and it's available.